and if you're kind of wondering why now, guys, I mean, other than <laughs> Jared, just kidding. In case you hadn't heard, um, Mel was being uh, interviewed on the Arcade One Up Weekly uh, show, and uh, John D was there. Mel mentioned that they've got some VR announcements coming soon. So me and Jared mm. were like, "Well, oh, okay, then I guess if, if if Zen is getting back into the VR game, we probably should, you know, be getting somewhat more knowledgeable about it too, because." You know, digital pinball, it's what we cover. Um, That's right. So what are we going to be talking about then? Specifically, three games. We are dealing with Pinball FX2 VR. Not mm -hmm. Pinball FX3. There is no Pinball FX3 VR. Pinball FX2 no. VR. Zacharia VR. And Stern Pinball Arcade VR. Okay, those are the three um, biggies. Uh, you know, go figure. For the main players. <laughs> Yeah. out there in, in pinball land. Right. Yeah. Um, we are not, again, stepping into the VPX world. I'm sorry. It would literally be like if we were doing an animation show that focused on, you know, Disney and Pixar and DreamWorks and Blue Sky, and then you guys went, well, but what about anime? Yeah. That's a whole nother beast entirely that you don't just go, yeah, I've seen Akira. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Yeah, it's it's uh it's it's a very different beast. Um, we've explained why yeah. um, in the past. It's it's tricky to get set up, um, and it's well, it's it's a hobbyist version. Of, right. Of so yes, we are aware that VR exists there, but mm. let, we'll let somebody else deal with that. We're dealing with the commercial mm. side of of uh, of pinball. So yeah. Like I said, those three programs. Um, two of those programs, Stern and Zen, are native to the Oculus Store. Yes. Zacharia is uh, Steam. So yes. So you're going to be right. dealing with Steam VR and Oculus VR. Uh, and there's a little bit of a, a, a jarring experience dancing between those two also. Um, mm. At least for me, there was. Because uh, while the programs will talk to each other, they're not set up the same way at all. So that's kind of the different thing. Um, so let's dive right in, right? Mm. First thing, when you throw on that headset, when you load up the, the program, what are you greeted with? You're greeted with basically the user interface of the, uh, of the program. So yep. I wanted to show what the various user interfaces look like to you guys. Mm. Let's start off here with Zen. So you got a, a screen there, gives you the intro. You've got three pinball machines in this ginormous room. The machines are at a far distance. You load in, boom, table is in front of you, and away you go. Okay, so there is Zen's. It's a very open UI. It's very simplistic. You're not, um, it feels like it's definitely made for VR. Uh, if yeah. you want to change the tables that are within that room, you look at the big TV screen, you go into it, and what are you presented with? Basically, the FX2 menu of tables. Mm. Um, it's not columns or anything else like that that you're used to with FX3. It's just the, here's everything that we have. Um, which is, how many tables is that? What, like 16 or so? I can't remember how many. Or 12. Something like that. It's 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 not even all of the Zen originals that are no, in there. Like, not even like close. Tesla, Tesla and stuff like that are not in there. Shaman, those ones aren't in there. It's probably probably for good reason. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, they're, it's they're, a limited collection. Age. It's a very limited Although, collection. Having saying that, I actually think those tables really need VR because they are very hard to understand. Yes. Um, in in two D, and that's another thing that you know, we'll talk about yes. during the course of the show as well. So there's, that's the Zen experience. Now mm. let me present you with the Zacharia experience. Okay. Imagine that you are, I'm just going to pause this for a moment here. Imagine that you're in one of those true IMAX theaters where it's you a wall train. it's a wall of seats and you've got a six story tall screen in front of you that's what this is like 
and you sitting in the front row. Like, it is right there in your face. And as Jared is the one that uh, captured the video here, as you'll see, you have to look around in order to see everything. I'm literally going like this yeah. with my head to actually get this vision. It is that, that apparent what you have to do. It is really hard to see everything in view. And there's no way you can back it up. Nope. Like, you basically, like, you look down, you're on this stage, and and this screen is like you're standing straight there, like Chris is saying. It is really, really close. It's, it is definitely uh, a bit jarring and... Um a bit headache inducing <laughs> almost yeah, immediately where you're just like, oh, good Lord, look at that. Um, the, the one thing it is though, is it's really crisp. Like even though it's really close to you like that, mm -hmm. the resolution is really, really good. And like on the quest Two hardware, I don't get any, any like pixel issues or anything like that. It's like, you're just looking like you, it's like you've zoomed in, but you're losing no fidelity at all. Like it's, it is crisp. So that's something. So basically what Zachariah has done here is they haven't done anything special for VR. They literally took their menus that you're used to when playing on Steam, because I don't know what it looks like on Switch or on, on, on any of the other systems, and mm. just made it a VR version. That's all they've yeah. done. It's not, just they didn't added... create a special environment or anything. They just added the two lenses. Yeah. Like, they switched on, switched it on, basically, and said, right. oh, here it is. Because it is, you know, it's an add-on. Yeah. 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 Um, let's take a look at what Stearns looks like. Hmm. Let me... All right. So, Stearns, you were presented with this, basically, a lounge. The weird thing is you're standing up on a staircase, looking down into this pit, and so it feels like you're floating too high, <laughs> which is yeah. a little bit odd um, of a sensation. But the room does feel spacious. You don't feel like anything is thrown in front of your face, um, at least immediately. And then let me... Uh... The environment looks, like in Stern, the environment looks really, really nice. Like the the area that you're in, in their, their game lobby, it's like, it surprised me. Mm -hmm. When I first loaded, I thought, okay, this is going to be... I, I was remembering the mobile app and what that looked like and and going, oh, this is going to be mm, a little bit average. Yeah. But no, I got in there and went, oh, I wasn't expecting this. It looks, it looks really good. So I mean, it definitely helps having spatial, you know, a, a space to be in uh, you yes. know, with, the, with some distance and room in there so that you're not feeling like it's just... An, immediate slap in the face to your eyeballs. Um, yeah. Okay, so let me come back here. Hold on. This video is dancing all over the place as I get in here. So there's the UI, basically, the menu that then pops up for you to make your selections uh, with. Um, not the most intuitive go figure from Farsight. No. <laughs> because yeah, who would have thought? There's all sorts of stuff going on here you know you've got one of the things it's a free app yeah it is um you can it's freemium you know, free to play yes free to play. System. yeah um so that being said you're dealing with a token system you're dealing with a store you're dealing with table of the day you know this free goals of the day that are free uh, table select where things are locked, but you can still play them if you spend some of your tokens. And I mean, it just kind of becomes kind of a muddled experience. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing that I don't like about it either, <laughs> well, the room looks good. But the, the other thing I don't like either is that it, considering this is a, an experience built for Oculus um, on Oculus desktop, they when to select a menu for ages i was going okay i'm point you the way you do things in vr generally is you point at a menu and you select it with the trigger and i was pointing at it i was going trigger why isn't this working mm. turns out that you've got to actually point and then use a to select a menu well this and is... that doesn't sound like a big thing it doesn't sound like a big thing it is but it's just like it's it's not the pattern that Oculus want you to use when you're developing an app. Like they want you to select things with a trigger because the whole idea with Oculus is your hand is your interface and like using a button breaks the feeling. 
of well, and, and as I'll talk about a little bit later, um, Farsight, for some reason, likes to program their controllers different than everybody and make mm. them function differently, which is like, yeah, come on. It's special. They're yeah. special. Um, 